This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Yahweh which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father and the name of His Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. The top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible. And risk your lives doing so and never waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami. Coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying, okay? Now, um, as you can see on the screen, I have here uh, the Bishop Nathaniel uh, from uh, the Church of Israel, Israel United in, in Christ. And I hate saying that word, but um, just for namesake and for edification's sake, okay? And um, the reason I opened up with uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter and the 15th verse is because this guy is fitting the shoes of who... Our Lord Yahweh Shah warned us about, okay? You know, outwardly, he looks like an Israelite. He does, okay? Has his beard, you know, has his afro, has his garment on, his fancy garment on, okay? But inwardly, he's a ravening, a ravenous wolf, okay? One of the attributes of a wolf is to devour, you see? And that's exactly what he's doing with his congregation. And the reason why... It's because he's not teaching this thing uh, in sincerity, okay? When you look at his numbers, man, <laughs> the Bishop Nathaniel is banking, man, okay? Because we, you know, the Lord uh, is in the business of revealing uh, wickedness, man, okay? And over the years, we've heard guys who've left the IUIC speak on different tactics that, you know, that are not conducive <laughs> to, to, this, to growing uh, the ministry or feeding the sheep, okay, taking people's IP addresses, um, you know, having people give all their information in, paying a, a, a IUIC starter kit, okay, and when you look at those numbers, if every one of those people paid a IUIC starter kit, then this guy is banking, okay, but um, what we want to deal on, uh, or speak on in this lesson is a, a video he did, which basically, as you can see, it says public announcement to uh, black Hebrew Israelites. OK, if, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, you know, that should be alarming right there. OK. And, you know. Like the scriptures speak about uh, a man being fully persuaded in his own mind. OK. And you don't get that in this video, okay? You get uh, the Bishop Nathaniel uh, actually reaching out, compelling, you know, uh, uh, people who may not have the spirit of, uh, of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushua in them to come in, okay? And really, the vast majority of his church does not have the spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushua, okay? So I can understand that, okay? They have the spirit of Christ, okay? And there was a video that came out recently by uh, some chick, you know, um, and she was calling them out for uh, what they did at the Barclays Center, you know, and, um, you know, I hated to do it, but I had to give her a credence and, and credit because she was on point and she was basically calling them out for doing that, saying that's not in the scriptures to be marching around a building and trying trying to get support from, you know, uh, uh, you know, basically Kyrie Irving, you know, and she called them out. And she was she was spot on. She was spot on, you know, but that's what you set yourself up for when you're not walking in this thing sincerely and, 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 and um, giving credence, okay, to the true powers, which are Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, to hell with Christ, okay? But um, we're going to, um, I'm going to play this video. It's, it's short. It's only four minutes long, okay? And, um, you know, I'll, I'll commentate in between and then we'll get some precepts, okay? So, hey, <laughs> I'm pretty sure brothers, certain brothers have seen this and you brothers who haven't, viewer discretion is advised. <laughs>
John chapter 19, verse 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews. What I want you to see, Joseph of Arimathea, which was a rich man, he was a disciple of Christ, but secretly. You heard what T.K. Kirkland just said? He says, stay low. And what did he say? And flex occasionally. Joseph of Arimathea, of Arimathea stayed low. He was a disciple of Christ, meaning a student of Christ, secretly for fear of the Jews. What does that mean? If the Jews had found out, meaning the Pharisees and the scribes, that he was a follower of Christ, they would have tried to destroy his money. Mm -hmm. That's what we saw with Kirk Frank, not Kirk Franklin, damn. Uh, Nick Cannon and Deshaun Jackson. Read 38 again. Verse 38. And after this, Joseph... Right. And you see the point he made? They had to stay secret. Okay, or the Jews would destroy their money. You see? But here it is. You're just giving a public announcement. Hey, you Israelites that have a lot of money, come join us. <laughs> Boy. Of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. So he used his influence to get the body of Christ. He was a rich man. He had influence because of his wealth. And he used his influence to get the body of Christ and bury him. This is how our brothers and sisters who's in that entire entertainment field and whatever else, government, whatever, because a lot of people watch us, that's how you got to roll. Roll secretly and support this truth. We're going to show you that too. Give me that 1 Timothy 6.17. And what I'm saying is not coming from a place of covetousness. It's coming from... Yes, it is. <laughs> you see, he just told on himself. Yeah, if that wasn't the case, you wouldn't need to say it. Okay? And you see, he just sent the public announcement out to all the, 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 uh, the Israelites that are in the entertainment business. This is what you have to do. You see? And then now he's trying to, you know, <laughs> uh, clean it up a little bit, saying he's not coming from a, a place of uh, covetousness yeah right scripture I'm going to show you that right now 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded I want you to read this again go ahead charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches why is it uncertain because you can lose it that's what Nick Cannon feared. That's what Deshaun Jackson feared. That's what Joseph Arimathea feared. I can lose these riches. Go ahead. But in the living God. So now you're comparing uh, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Deshaun Jackson, and uh, Nick Cannon to Joseph of Arimathea. Wow. Okay, these guys pretty much denounced their belief. In whatever God they were worshiping, you know, and ultimately we knew that they confessed that they were Hebrew Israelites, but they denounced it for the sake of riches. Joseph of Arimathea did not do that. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Go ahead. Verse 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute. Y'all see that? That they be good. That they be rich in good works, ready to distribute. They have the funds. That's Joseph Amethyst's job. That's what Husa, Joanna, the wife of Herod Stewart, that's what she did. That's what the men and women did. They supported Christ behind the scenes. Read it again. Verse 18. That they do good. That they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Willing to communicate. Read laying up in store for themselves a good foundation because if you do that you're laying up in store for themselves a good foundation go ahead against the time to come against the time because destruction is coming go ahead that they may lay hold on eternal life all these hollywood stars these entertainers whatever they are they want eternal life a lot of them do not all of them but some of them do if you do verse 18 is telling you what you have to you can't be on the front line like the rest of us Stay in the background, be a secret follower, and support this truth. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. From there, give me Hebrews 6 and 10. Right, and like I mentioned earlier, okay, one of the core principles of, the, uh, of, uh, of this ministry, okay, and um, 
your obedience and following Yahweh Shai, okay, is to be fully persuaded in your own mind that this is what you want to do, okay? You can't have a guy sitting on the podium with a, with a fancy garment on telling you this is what you need to do, you know? That's something that is going to be uh, invested in you spiritually, and you're going to want to do it, okay? And then there's no need to speak on it, okay? Now, to the contrary, our elder, our elder apostles um, have spoken on uh, matters like this, but very vaguely. You know, they pretty much said there are guys out here who, um, you know, you know, have have uh, a position in this world. OK, when, when I mean what I mean by position is, um, you know, uh, may have riches. OK. And, um, you know, we deal with them and that's as far as they went. OK, so even the members of Great Millstone, we don't even know who these men are, who the elder apostles are dealing with that that have stature. You see Why? Key point, they're secret disciples, okay? And it's obvious, obvious who this man is bringing attention to. He's naming names. He named Nick Cannon, okay? Obviously, they went and marched for Kyrie Irving, and I had compassion for Kyrie Irving in that moment, man, because this guy didn't declare. He didn't declare he was a part of this group or this faction. And when you look at it and what he's saying, Kyrie's all over the place, man. He believes in the flat earth. I heard him dibble and dabble in the five percent, five percent of uh, doctrine, uh, uh, you know, Hebrew Israelites, you know. But he even came out on his Twitter and said, look, I'm not a part of any of these groups, you know. And that was beautiful. You know, I actually clapped to myself like, yeah, because Nate is we see through him, man. OK, our elder apostles know him and they've told us about him for years, you see. And that's why I opened this thing up with Matthew, the seventh chapter in the uh, 15th verse, man, because that's exactly who he is, okay? And people will look at, oh, great millstone, we have, uh, they got beef with uh, IUIC because they got more money, we got nicer, gun. no, no, okay? The scriptures tell us what? Mark them that cause division, okay? Um, to defend this gospel, okay? And what he's doing is not a part of this gospel, man. He's taking and twisting things, okay, because of what? Because of filthy lucre's sake, man. Okay? And like I said, when you look at his numbers, this guy's well off, man. The elders have always said that. They said that years ago. He's well off. And he's increased in numbers exponentially since then. So you can only imagine. Okay? And now, of course, there's supposed to be a tithing system. Of course, that's, that's mandatory. Okay? That's in the scriptures. But you can only imagine how he's implementing the ties amongst his congregation, man. You can only imagine. I won't even go out on a limb and, and guesstimate, but you can only imagine, man. Okay? But me personally, I've only heard uh, uh, the elder, top elder apostles uh, uh, make mention uh, of tithing one time as far as addressing the matter. One time. The elder apostle Ramlav did years back, and uh, he was going in. And then finished off by basically saying, look, if you don't want to give, don't give. Keep your funky money, you know. Why? Because it's a part of the scriptures. And if you're, you're eating and you're learning from these men, you should be tithing. OK, so that's mandatory. You see, and when you look at their numbers and they're tithing, man, hey, <laughs> this man is well off, man. OK, and guess what? The scriptures speak about a, a gift destroying the heart. You see, and he's seeing all those riches that he's getting. And now he can't even discern when he's coming off as a money hungry wolf. You see? What do you say? Why well, don't you say it on the mic? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. So people say, well, if I'm behind the scenes, God might forget about me. You're behind the scenes, but you're doing the work. You're behind the scenes secretly or wherever your seat or position is. It said what? Read it again. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Which Okay, now, hey, you actually contributing to the ministry, okay, uh, is considered a work, okay? But more specifically, what work is being spoken of here in the book of Hebrews? Okay, actually teaching this word, okay, the true charity, 
okay? Not giving FRNs to make a, 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 a rich uh, a leader in Christ uh, 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 more lucrative. You see? So this guy's taking the scriptures and, 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 and making them fit, man. Wow. He have showed toward his name. Which we have showed towards his name in the word of God. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. In that ye have ministered to the saints. In that you have ministered to the saints. The Israel, you helped us. That's what it's saying. Help us. Go ahead. And do men. You see how adamant he, a bit, how adamant he is about it? Help us. When really the church should sustain itself. Okay. And I'll speak for a great millstone. It sustains itself. Okay. I won't go into uh, uh, ins and outs. But it does, okay? The tithing system that Yahweh Bashim Yahushua set up should sustain itself. The church should sustain itself. And guess what? His church is sustaining itself, okay? He just sees a big payday, a big payoff. Mister. Okay, so that's pretty much it on that, man. Oh, boy, yeah. Hey, the elders have always said it and given us foresight and forewarning. And guess what? Now it's our turn to do it. Why? Because there's a mass awakening happening. A lot of people are considering and, and, and looking into the Hebrew Israelites. Okay. And he's taking this for a time of advantage and, put, and, and basically putting his, his face and his church on the forefront. So a lot of people are going to run to them because they're thinking that, oh, okay, this is the representation of the Hebrew Israelites. But the reality it is, is not. Okay. It is at, actually... Okay, the variance to the true ch true believers of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. See, they don't mention the name. They say Christ, just like the Christian uh, preacher does, the Baptist, the Methodist preacher does. Okay, and one of the main reasons why is because they've taken the five hundred one c three. Okay, and there was another one that in that video that the, the female that I was speaking of, uh, basically going at IUIC. I think it was the five hundred one c five hundred one c five or six, one of those two. Brothers, if you get a chance, you can look it up. And it's uh, something that deals with, you know, being tax exempt uh, for for religious purposes. OK. And that's the case with IUIC. They have a 501C exemption. OK. So obviously, what does that mean? They're connected with the government in some form or fashion. OK. And this guy is in law enforcement. I'm not sure if he still uh, is employed or is an officer or whatnot. OK. But some type of way he's connected uh, with law enforcement, man. Okay. And it's a bunch of red flags with this guy, man. Okay. But like I said, that's why the true believers and the true teachers are set up to combat this, man. Okay. Because a lot of people are coming in and they might see them and they may think they're the figurehead. Okay. But when we actually dive into the scriptures and show and prove and peel back the disguise that these guys are wearing, then the true believers that are out there that are seeking this truth are going to have foresight as well. You see? Okay, so let's jump on in. This is... um, What did I want? Uh, Acts. Salakia. This is the book of Acts, chapter 20. Yep, Acts chapter 20, verse 30. It says, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Okay, and that's exactly what he did. He took those scriptures and twisted them. Okay, now were there some truths in what he was saying? Of course. Okay, because to tell a lie, you got to know the truth. Okay, so he spoke certain truths. Okay, but in in a perverse manner to do what to to uh, uh, basically um, get men who really don't have a true understanding of the scriptures to come in. Okay, namely Nick Cannon, Deshaun Jackson. These are people that he's reached out to in prior times. You know, prior to these men, you know, in recent years coming out and acknowledging that they were Hebrew Israelites. Man, they first and foremost he was sickly. Okay. And he wasn't on the scene. You you didn't hear signs of him. Now all of a sudden, guys that have uh, uh, that are lucrative, 
you know, and uh, announcing that they're Hebrew Israelites like uh, uh, Kendrick Lamar. He's another one. <laughs> they basically fucked this guy's money up, man. Okay? And that's what he's doing. He's trying to heap disciples unto himself, man. And you see, he said secret disciples. So you're calling out to the secret disciples and naming them and telling them that they have to help your ministry. Okay? When your ministry should be sufficient of itself. Okay? Where's the scripture where they called Joseph, told Joseph of Arimathea, man, you got to do this. You got to go. No, no, no. The spirit. It was the spirit in Joseph of Arimathea. Okay? To do what he did. Oh, boy. This is, uh, I'll read Acts 20 and 30 again. It says, also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You see? And that's exactly what uh, Bishop Nathaniel was doing, man. Okay? And like I said, we set up to call this shit out, man, because it ain't right. And it's disgusting, to be honest. It's absolutely disgusting. And for those of us that know him, okay, well, I won't say know him, but have heard of his uh, pernicious ways, okay, this is so obvious, man. This is so obvious, like, and, it, and it's, it's a shame. But this guy has continued to offend, you see, and as well as his church. And, and I'm glad the Lord just brought this back to my remembrance because the elder Apostle Gabar was speaking last week, pretty much saying how um, we got ridiculed and mocked. Okay, Great Millstone. We got ridiculed and mocked because we, claim, we, we uh, proclaimed that we are a faith-based group. We're a faith-based Israelite group, man. Meaning the, 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 the basis of, of, of what we represent is based off of faith. Okay? Our foundation is faith. And the scriptures uh, uh, throughout the whole Bible, there are numerous accounts of men uh, basically being renowned because of what? Of their faith. Hebrews, Hebrews the 11th chapter. Okay? But we got mocked and ridiculed about it. And I, I watched the interview uh, I guess one of the top men in IUIC down at the Barclays Center, and I, I thought I saved it, but I, I I couldn't find it. But this guy said basically, uh, they asked him, "Who are you and what do you represent?" He said, "Yeah, we're uh, Israel United in Christ. Okay, we're we're a Black Hebrew Israelite group." And this guy said, "Black Hebrew Israelite group, right?" And um, he said, "And also we're faith based." So I'm like, "Wow." You see, so they're a bunch of hypocrites, man. Okay, and hey, it's nothing personal. It's 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 never personal. Okay, we've been set up to defend the gospel, and guess what? There's still fruit out there. So that's what these uh, 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 lessons and epistles are for. Okay, not to beef and go back and forth. Nah, it's to actually point out these guys' wrongs, so that the hopefully elect are not deterred, which is impossible anyway. Okay, but that's one of the manifestations of them not being deterred, that men are actually defending that gospel and bringing out the 100 percent truth okay, that we have here at Great Millstone. And we boldly proclaim that. Why? Because the scriptures say that we have been given an unction okay, or, or, or um, anointing okay, an unction to know all things. And when it says all things, it means according to the scriptures. OK. Let's get another one. Salakia. Bear with me. It's the book of um The Book of Titus, chapter one. Yep, the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 10, it says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Okay? And this is. Oh, Salakia. This is a face of deception. Okay? And my humble stay in this in this ministry. Okay. I've witnessed this for myself. Okay. This guy actually wrote the name of the Lord on the rock backwards, man. And then made mockery of it. Oh, it's the name Yahweh. Oh my God. Oh, it is real. You know, making mockery of it. I've witnessed that. Nobody told me that. I witnessed that. Okay. And the video, and they put the video up. 
You see? And there are a whole uh, a slew of other occasions where this guy's went the fuck off. Okay? But that's neither here nor there. Okay? This is um back at Titus 1 and 10. And it reads, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, um, especially they of the circumcision. Okay, and what it means by especially they of the circumcision, meaning those, okay, that are Israelites and know that they're Israelites. Okay. Verse 11, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses. Okay, and his whole house is subverted. Now, every day, every now and then you got guys that, that bug out of there and, you know, realize that <laughs> that ain't the way. And then they come out and speak on it. Okay, but for the most part, his whole house is subverted. You saw how many men they had down there at the Barclays Center. Okay, all of those guys are, are, are following the blind into a ditch. Verse 11, it says, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. You see, and obviously he had members in there and he was teaching them. Okay, but the message was going out to who? The rich black Hebrew Israelite entertainers, okay? So that was not a message that you should have been teaching your congregation, you see? But hey, he had to fulfill prophecy. You see? I read that again. Uh, uh, Titus 1 and 11, it says, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. You see? And that's what Nate is all about, man. Filthy lucre, okay? Using the scriptures to get men's money. And that's exactly what he was doing with the message to those entertainers, man. Okay? The proof is in the pudding, you know? And, and, and it is a beautiful thing to see how the scriptures are fulfilling themselves, man. Okay? This is beautiful. It shows the, the validity and the power of the Bible, man. This is... um. First Timothy chapter six. Let's see. We'll start at five. This is uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 5. It says, uh, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Okay? And Nate is destitute of the truth. But guess what? He was once taught the truth. Okay? But he went another route. He went the filthy lucre route. Okay? And then in doing so, you're going to have to pervert the doctrine. You see? It says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. You see? And it's exactly what uh, uh, the Bishop Nathaniel is doing, man. Okay? Read it again. Verse 5, it says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. And he said it. You got to help this ministry. That's what you have to do, what Joseph of Arimathea did. So he's telling uh, uh, mortal men who really don't have a full belief, okay, in the scriptures, that they're supposed to put on the, uh, uh, the hat that Joseph of Arimathea wore. Wow. Verse 6, it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. You see? So right there, he's exposed, man. Okay? He's supposed to be content with what his church is yielding for itself, to sustain itself. Okay? Because uh, well, another one of the commandments is that we all are supposed to work. So if you're working and taking care of your, your duties and tithing, okay, the Lord is going to suffice the rest. You see? But the main thing is what? Teaching this truth and sincerity. 
Okay, not trying to heap disciples unto yourself or tip, uh, bring disciples away. Okay, and calling out secret disciples and naming their names when they're supposed to be secret disciples. You see, so like I say, the proof is in the pudding, man. And I, like I say, I don't want to make this too long. Okay, uh, I believe I hit the point, man. You know, and that's what we call to do to expose wickedness, man. And that's exactly what that was. Okay, so our uh, Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I say, Shalom.